Assalamu alaikum. Greetings of peace. This is Tumaya Khalifa with the Islamic Speakers Bureau of Atlanta welcoming you to another amazing day of Ramadan inspiration. And today we're so blessed and honored to have our own brother, friend, khatib, uh, leader, uh, our, my dear brother, Tariq Abdul Haq. Tariq? Good morning and assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon everyone. Um, welcome to this very sunny, at least here. And this part of Atlanta is a very sunny day. It's very bright. It's beautiful outside. It's wonderful. We're very happy that our dear uh, leader and mentor, Sumaya Khalifa, had a wonderful birthday yesterday. Alhamdulillah. Um, yesterday, we were blessed with a, a great bayan. Um, with messages from our beloved Sheikh Minawi. Um, we had Ustad Zainab Ansari on Monday share with us. We had Brother Amin Tome share with us on Tuesday, and then the message from the Sheikh yesterday. So these wonderful messages made me reflect. It really made me reflect. And as I took some of the notes, especially from yesterday, uh, Sheikh Minawi spoke of Ramadan being an opportunity to shake hands with one's heart, an opportunity to get to know one's deeper self, an opportunity to reconnect on a deep level with Allah, the Lord of the worlds, our creator, our cherisher, our sustainer, the one who is eminently and tremendously merciful and also especially and specifically merciful. And the one who, as the Quran says many times, is Ra'uf al-Ibad, he is Ra'uf, kind and generous to his servants. In thinking about yesterday and the message of connecting with the heart and love, uh, it made me think, yes, this is the month of Quran. Yes, this is the month of dua, of calling on God, of prayer, of lifting one's hands. This is a month of, of goodness. It is a month of khair. It's a month of tremendous blessings because you have a, a worldwide group of people who are all united in the purpose of fasting for, to please God. Not that God needs our fasting, but it is a means of us, as the Sheikh said yesterday, to polish our hearts and to raise in virtue in inner strength, in inner purity, in inner cleanness, so that we may be better in our interactions with each other, in our interactions with the world, in our interactions with our families, in our interaction, in our interconnectedness with all living things. So it is a means to a state, a means to an end of taqwa, of that God consciousness. And the Sheikh said that it was, the, you, can, you can have the analogy of it being a situation of I love you, I love God. And eventually we transcend from just merely practicing the outward aspects of the fast, and refraining from food and drink. But we begin fasting on an inner, inner level and turn away from things we know that we shouldn't watch and guarding our ears against paying attention or ear hustling as they call it, the things that are none of our concern are saying things that we should not say, that our conscience knows we should not say, um, that are wrong, that are bad, that are evil about other people, that are speaking ill of others, or, 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 or spreading rumors, or spreading information that we don't have any certain knowledge of. That that level of the fasting then leads us to a level and we seek to be worshiping God as if we see him, though understanding we cannot see him, yet he sees us. So then it gave me a thought that, wow, this really is one huge love affair, that the month of Ramadan is a love affair. It's a love affair of the worshipers seeking to draw closer and closer and closer to the true object of love, the, the, the Lord of all the worlds, God, who, as he says in the Quran, is closer to us than our jugular veins. And the jugular vein is very close to me carries nourishment throughout the entire body. And if that were to be severed, we would die. God uses that analogy that he is closer to us than our jugular veins. So if this is a love affair, indeed, it gives a whole different perspective on the fasting. 
So then I found the verse that many of you know, but it just solidified this concept of the love affair. And this is in the third surah of the Quran, Ali Imran, where I would have been the Shaitan or Jima seek refuge with God against Satan, the rejected enemy. Say, obey Allah in the messenger. So one would think, well, why? What is that? The previous verse, the verse before that says, who, and this is God saying to his messenger Muhammad, say to the people, who, in kuntum and the translation of that is say, if you love God, if you love Allah, in kuntum to hibbun Allah, fattabi uni. So follow me. The God is telling the people, if you love me, then follow the one that I have sent as a guide for you. Follow the prophet, Muhammad, prayers and peace be upon him. And then he says, what will you gain from this? He says, you hibba, you hibba kum Allah, that God will love you and he will forgive your sins. So this is wonderful. This is outstanding. This is ecstatic news and it's an affirmation and should reinforce our desire to engage in this spiritual boot camp of Ramadan because God in his kindness has given us an example, a human being that followed his direction, followed his guidance, put his whole heart and his soul, his entire being in the servants of in the service of God. And he is an example for us. That God is not only giving us the book, but he's giving us a practical example of how to live that book. And we know that Aisha, the wife of the prophet, one of the wives of the prophet, the mother of the believers, when she was asked what was the character of, of the prophet upon him be peace, in one of the famous narrations, she said, he was the Quran walking. He was the scripture walking. And if Ramadan is a month of the Quran, and the Quran is revealed in this month, and we recite it, we meditate upon it, we ponder it, we seek to change our inner lives by means of it and therefore our outer, then if the Prophet upon him peace was the Quran walking, it's an example and a guide of actually how to put it into practice. So this, this ayah is perfect in terms of bringing this love affair together. Again, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ يُحِبُّنَ اللَّهَ وَاتَّبِئُونِي يُحْبِبُكُمَ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Say, if you love God, follow me, meaning the Prophet. Allah will love you. God will love you and forgive you your sins. For God is oft forgiving, most merciful. And then the next ayah goes on, which I've begun with. So say, then obey God and the messenger. And the rest of the verse goes on to say, But if you turn away, God does not love those who are not grateful to him. So the sending of his messenger was a mercy that we should be grateful and thankful for. And as the Sheikh had all said in a previous, a previous uh, inspiration, that in the Quran, many times God gives the higher, the good first, the positive, what one can gain. And then he also shows after that, the consequence if you don't turn away. So if we truly say we love God, he will want God's love in return. Follow the example of the messenger who put the Quran into practice, which should be our goal, to put it into practice. As a, 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 a scholar uh, and, and a teacher uh, published a book, The uh, Walking Quran, uh, 
Dr. Bilal Ware is an excellent book about the tradition, tradition of the faith tradition of Islam in West Africa in the Quran schools. And the objective was to not only, not just memorize the Quran, but make it as a means to transform the lives of the students into a practical example of walking Quran. So this is what we hope we can do. And Allah then says that he doesn't love those who are ungrateful. So let us be loving, let us be grateful, let us be thankful, let us follow the Prophet, prayers and peace be upon him in terms of the example of his character, the heart, the inner, the hulking azim, the tremendous character so that we can ascend in virtue, ihsan. If anything I have said is good and true and, and is in inspirational, then that is from God. And if any mistakes I've made, those are mine. And I apologize for that. But we say peace to all of you and have a wonderful day and the rest of Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Brother Tarek, thank you so much for the beautiful, beautiful inspiration and for reminding us of so many different things about gratefulness, about being thankful, about following the character of the Prophet May peace and blessings be upon him. And I love your, your, your spin on Ramadan being a love affair. And it truly is a love affair with, with God Almighty, with the Prophet, with our family and friends. And um, may God's peace and blessings be upon our Prophet. And may God's peace be upon all of us during this very blessed month. And thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and your insight with all of us. Jazakallah khair. To all of you, thank you for joining us. Uh, we are so thankful you're with us. Hopefully you got a lot and you get a lot out of our inspirations. Hope that you also support the ISB at isbatlanta.org. Thank you and we'll see you again, inshallah, tomorrow. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you.